Hi, in this video we will show you how to make decisions in round number one of business simulation games. I will use travel agency as an example, but if you play any other game you can also watch this video to get an idea. The first thing you will see after entering the simulation is the dashboard. The dashboard shows all the crucial data and the most important results from the previous rounds. You will find the following details here. Your company's name and logo, your position in the ranking, it tells you how your team is doing comparing to the competition. The ranking will be available from round 3. The other thing is the number of rounds in the game and the current round. Your net income, which is equal 0 right now because you haven't started selling yet. In the next round your income from the previous rounds will be shown here. Account balance, these are funds that are currently available in your bank account. At this point, your account balance shows the initial capital that you received to start the company a minimum gross salary that you must pay the employee, employees and equipment working time, it tells you the number of hours every employee works during a month, regardless of the type of the contract, and for how many hours each equipment you purchased can be used. Depreciation rate, it is the rate at which the equipment will be depreciated depending on its value. Other information, the income tax rate and the employee's contribution rate that you will be paying over gross salary for every employee on a full-time contract. You can return to this dashboard whenever you want by clicking on the simulation logo in the top left corner of the screen. Next to every piece of information given in the simulation there is an eye icon where you can find description and hints. Use them if you don't know what a given number or position means. Additionally, on the left side of the screen, there is a black panel with the simulation guide and video guides. All decisions in the simulation should be made starting from the left side and ending on the right side of the top menu. The first item in the menu is your email inbox. At the beginning of every month, check your inbox because you'll be getting messages from, for example, your business mentor, tax office, industry media or your employees. Your task is to assess if the information in a particular message has a real impact on your business. After doing so, draw conclusion leading to an appropriate reaction. First decision you make is your company name. On the left side of the screen you can see some examples and on the right side you can type in the name that you want. Please note that the maximum number of characters you can use for the company name is 12. You can also upload your company's logo. The decisions must be safe with the safe button. Remember that within one round you can change your decision any number of times. So if you change your mind and want to edit your company name, you can do it as many times as you want until the game is advanced to the next round. What's more, remember that if you play in a team, each team member is an equal partner and they can save and change every decision. The system will always remember the last decision saved by any member of the team. Therefore, always make decisions together and it is enough if the decision is saved in the system by just one person. The next decision concerns the mission statement. Again, on the left you will find the exemplary mission statements. On the right side there is a place for your company's mission statement. After entering the mission statement, confirm it with the save button. If you run a virtual company in a team, make decisions concerning team rules. Choose the rules that you want your team to follow. You can choose any number of rules. Next decision concerns the division of roles. You can define what will be the task or what department individual team member will be responsible for. If you work in a team, titles with the names of all team members will appear here. You can choose any number of departments for a single person. You don't have to select all departments. You can also allocate responsibility for a given department to several people. The roles you choose do not affect company's performance or scope of decisions that will be available to individual team member. Then move on to defining your company's offer. Your task will be to define the offer of services that you would like to provide in your company. You will not be selling them in a round one, however, you have to forecast the number of customers you might expect. This will help you to determine how many employees you will need and make appropriate investments in workstations. In the offer tab, you will find information about all services that your company will be able to provide. The following details are provided about each service. Annual demand, which is an approximate number of customers that your company can expect through the whole year. Expected price, which is an approximate price your customer is willing to pay for the type of the service. Service time, which is the time needed by your employee to serve one customer. 
seasonality graph which shows how the demand changes in individual months and additionally under the detail bottom you will find detailed information about the equipment, resources and type of employees required to sell each service. At the initial stage of your company activity you can choose only the first three activities. All the other services do not have the select button which allows to turn them on. It will appear in the next rounds and it is when you can add more services to your offer. If you decide to add a given service to your offer, press the select button. The place to enter the monthly demand forecast will appear. Your task is to forecast the number of customers you can expect for a given service in the next month. You can define the monthly demand forecast on the basis of the annual demand and seasonality index. In the seasonality graph, you will find 12 bars representing individual months. If the seasonality index for a given month is 1, it means that season is at average level this month. An indicator below 1 is a weaker season. An indicator above 1 means these are good months with more customers than average. Now let's calculate the demand forecast for three selected services. I will show it on Excel spreadsheet prepared in advance. And I encourage you to prepare such files as they will be very useful in every round. In my Excel spreadsheet, I have data from OfferTap. This is annual demand and seasonality index about the three selected services. Calculate the demand forecast for February by dividing annual demand by 12 to get an average monthly demand. Then multiply the result by seasonality index for the month for which you're forecasting. So in our case, let's take seaside holiday. The annual demand for the seaside holidays is 300. Divided by 12 to get an average monthly demand, then multiply the result by February's seasonality index, which is 0.5. The result is 12.5. Since this is supposed to be the number of customers, you need to round it to an integer. You can round up or down, it's up to you. In the same way, calculate the demand forecast for any other services. Now let's go back to the offer tab. Enter the forecasted monthly demand for all the services you want to provide. At this stage, you choose the services you want to sell next month and calculate the number of customers you can expect for each service. Now it's time to make decisions about investing in workstations. Workstations are the places for both your employees and their equipment. You must prepare them properly for the employees. Renovate, paint and adapt to the needs of the equipment that you will buy in the future. In this tab, you can buy the new workstation and you can check the monthly cost of maintaining your office. Remember that you need one workstation for every employee that you want to hire. A crucial information is that you need one month to prepare the workstation. It means that if you decide to create a workstation round one, it will not be available until round two. This is the only decision in the simulation that works with a one round delay. The number of workstation you need depends on the number of employees you want to hire in the next month. For this decision, you will need forecasts that you have made in the offer tab. So, to know the number of employees you will need, you have to calculate how many hours it will take to serve all the customers you have forecasted for the next month. To do this, go back to the offer tab. For every service, calculate the required employees' working time. Do it by multiplying the forecasted demand by the time needed to serve one customer. After summing up the employee's working time needed for all the services you have chosen, compare it with the employee's monthly working time. Remember that information that an employee works 160 hours a month is available on dashboard. If the result of your calculation is lower than 160 hours, it means that you need one employee. If the result is higher than 160 hours, then calculate how many employees you will need. Let's calculate the demand for employees on our example. Let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet where I have already prepared the information about my forecasted demand in February and I have copied the service time from the offer tab. Let's count the time needed to serve all the customer that is our forecasted demand for all services. So, we multiply the forecasted demand by the service time. As the next step, we sum up the values to get the total time needed to serve all customers in February. Then we compare this time with the maximum working time of the employees. Remember that in the simulation every employee works exactly 160 hours. If we divide the total time needed to serve all the customers by 160, we get the number of employees we need. In our case, the number is lower than 1, which means that we only need one employee to serve all planned customers, and thus we have to buy one workstation. If on the other hand you get a number higher than 1, 
it means that you need more employees. For example, 1.5 means that you will need two employees to serve all customers. As the next step, go back to the investment workstation tab and select the required number of workstations. You have to buy at least the same number of workstation as the number of employees you want to hire next month. You can buy more workstation if you want, because when you buy in bulk, the unit price is lower. In this case, they will be available in your company ready when you want to hire another employee. In every new round, it will be possible to purchase the new workstations. Now, let's move on to the finances. The next decision is to choose the bank where you will open your bank account. You can choose between the offers from the several banks that differ in terms of fees and interest rates. Choose one of that available banks. More offers may appear in the next rounds and you can change your bank anytime. The last decision in round one is the selection of the accounting office where your company books will be kept. The offers of accounting offices differ in the prices of recording the documents as well as the personnel and the payroll services. How many documents will be there at the start of your company? Well, you're just starting your own business, so it's hard to say. But starting from round two, you'll be able to check the approximate number of documents in the ledger. Remember that you can change the accounting office in every round. So if it turns out that another accounting office has a better offer for your company, you will just change it. Before finishing the round, make sure you have made all the decisions. The checklist will help you verify if all the most important decisions have been made. You can find three categories of warnings there. The warnings are marked with different colors. The red ones indicate the most serious omissions. The remaining ones are informative and their task is to draw your attention to check if all the decisions have been made and if the given values are correct. To check or correct the decisions indicated in the warnings, use the correct button on the right side of the message or go directly to the appropriate tab in the top of the menu. When all your decisions are ready, use the submit decision button to upload them to the server. This will inform your instructor that you are ready. Now you have to wait for the instructor to advance the game to the next round. Remember that system will not allow you to submit your decision if there are any critical errors in the checklist. If you're playing in a solo game, sending a decision will take you straight to the next round. I hope everything is clear. See you in the next videos. Good luck.